what is the mass and its absolute acceleration. You know that the mass is the conservative state of its own velocity. In fact, starting from the formula F equal m a, we have that F divided a is equal to m, that is the force of the unitary acceleration of its speed in the time. The meaning of the acceleration is the mass presence contained in the present section of the time's advancement. It is more or less sized only by the real relative speed of that section, more or less speed than the advancing relative field of the presence made by the space-time equal to space divided by the time equal velocity. When this relative speed is zero, the mass has the same velocity of the space-time. In this situation of a latching acceleration, the mass is acting as a zero, because it exists only in power to exist, relatively. In fact, it depends only on the real increment of its velocity, referred to the conservative field of what is present. The moment of the beginning acceleration presents the most resistance, opposite to every force, to give some real and existent acceleration to that mass, existent in that present section of the conservative space-time. The measurement of the mass is obtained by a relative balance recurring to the force of the magnetism of the Earth. This force, acting on every mass, pulls to accelerate it. Its action is opposed by a balance, and this real opposition is measured in kilograms. This opposition to the acceleration is the most, because the mass is not accelerated. Therefore, the weight that measures the opposition to the acceleration in its beginning measures the whole mass. Now, in the unit of the space, in one meter cubed, that represents the ten cycle of the unitary mass in every side of uh, the cube, every one sided matters ten rise to minus one, that is uh, one decimeter, we have ten cubed unitary masses of uh, unitary volumes, every one sided ten rise to minus three meters cubed equal to one decimeter cubed. Whatever mass had this form, we have this uh, ten cubed decimeter cubed forming one meter cubed. Like ten volumes, one on the other, every one having ten squared decimeter squared as its own base, and one decimeter as its eighth. All they, posed over the plot of a balance, touch that plot only by the first volume that is touching that plot. The other nine add their weight on that which is their common base, as energy 
added to the mass that is immediately touching the balance. In this simplest way, in conformity to the unitary models of the space, time, mass, energy, the most possible energy is nine times the mass one, standing on the balance plot. Without every doubt, we have that nine on one equal energy on mass equal energy divided mass is the absolute ratio that we must have also in the general relativity. If that of Einstein does not get in the physics without unification. Since the weight force is measured in the beginning of the opposite deceleration, the ratio 9 divided 1 is the most of the possible ratio between energy and the mass. By simplest consequence, at the C speed, that is, at the most added speed, we cannot have the most, but the last. In fact, at size 10 rise to 16 meters squared, second rise to minus 2 of C2, we have that C2 is less than the exact 9.0000 forever, being only 8.98755 and going on by the speed the C speed really measured in the vacuum. What is lacking in the Einstein formula? It is the electromagnetic section having that C2 only in the direction of the real flow of a mass only flowing and not atomically explosive. In fact, in every acceleration in line, we have the most when the atomic matter mass of 10 raised to 3 angstrom multiplies the atomic antimatter mass of the same 10 cubed angstrom, so that 10 raised to 6 angstrom moved of 10 rise to 10 angstrom equal 1 meter have the size 10 rise to 16 in meter squared second rise to minus 2 since in the space time we have 9 versors and since everyone has that speed the absolute speed in all the nine versors is consequently nine times ten rise to sixteen meters rise to two multiplied by second rise to minus two.